Well, you're looking at one proud grandfather. That's right. My 10-year-old son's basketball team is winning, and I'm very excited and very proud to say that his uh, group, his team, is being coached by my son. So we have this wonderful family atmosphere that what seems to be natural is that they are good at basketball. Something that seemed to be natural for my 10-year-old, for my son. Now, my Robert, he's a natural at cooking. You know, he's one of those who just grew up cooking, and he doesn't even need a recipe. He can just make biscuits in his sleep and sometimes does. And he just goes out there and just goes out and starts cooking away and doesn't necessarily need uh, to know what goes with what. He just starts assembling, putting it all together, and it's always delicious. So the question is, what's natural for you? What's natural for you? What characteristic is normal and easy and flows from you? Sometimes we have to pause to get to know ourselves a little bit better to really find what is our true nature or what is truly natural for us. We might be surprised at what we find is to be our natural state or what we are truly find that is a natural thing for us to do or that we may find with great ease and comfort to unfold within our lives. And it often at times it begins with remembering who you are. And to do that, you may have to forget who they told you you were. You know, when I was young, my mother rolled out this wonderful meat wrapping paper and crayons and said, here, I want you to start to draw and create and get ready for school. We're going to ask you to draw circles and squares and colors, and we're going to have you uh, write some alphabet to get you ready for school. And she said, you will be right-handed. Your father's right-handed, your mother's right-handed, your sister's right-handed, your brother's right-handed. Well, I tried. I tried to be right-handed. It was difficult for me. And I tried because my mother and family all thought I should be right-handed. They expected me to be right-handed. They told me I would be right-handed. Around third grade, one day, there was uh, opportunity for everyone going out to recess. The weather was beautiful. I want to go out and play. But the teacher said, you're not going out to recess until you write your alphabet clearly. I was so frustrated and so mad. I picked out the, the pen with my left hand and wrote out beautifully the alphabet. And she said, see, now you can do it. I said, no, I can't. She said, well, you just did it. I said, you see, I'm using my left hand, but everyone's told me I will be right. Ah, she said, why don't you use what's natural for you? So from there on forward, I became a left-handed uh, writer, uh, creator, uh, using the left hand uh, and able to write clearly. And my penmanship just began to excel and improve. And my teacher had to call my parents and said, why don't you just let him be what is natural for him? Let him be what is natural. What is his true nature? What his true state is? He's left-handed. So sometimes in life we have to stop uh, and let go uh, or forget all those things that everyone has told us you are or that you are not, and we have to discover what is natural and who we are and what our capabilities really are. We find in the Gospel of Luke the story of Jesus out in the wilderness and there he is encountering these adversarial thoughts. Scripture calls it a Satan, a devil, that which is adversarial in our thinking. It is not a being. It is not a creature. There is not a devil that is running around with a pitchfork and a red tail and horns trying to be as a being, trying to tempt us. It is these adversarial negative thoughts that we engage in mind and heart within our lives that always want to question and always want to maybe play the devil's advocate in thought at all time within our life. And Jesus is in the wilderness, and the thought comes and says, if you are the Son of God, then why don't you do X, Y, and Z? If. So the questioning there was this attack on his own identity. Wait a minute, you say this, and if this is true, if you really believe this is your nature, you believe this is who you are, if, then why don't you do this and that? Because, but the question is, doubt. Hmm, if. Are you really? Are you really this? Are you really that? And so there became this moment where he engaged with these adversarial thoughts, questioning his very purpose, his very identity, who he is and who he was called to be. 
And so it is that we find that 2,000 years later, you and I face adversarial thinking. Adversarial thinking that constantly wants to say, wait a minute, you said you were the son of God? You said you're a child of God? Really? You're a child of God? Are you really? And then we find a world that wants to constantly lie to us personally. You're not a child of God. A child of God would not be X, Y, and Z. A child of God would not be you and would not be living the way that you may live or way uh, look like you or act like you in any way, shape, or form. Or even using others to attack us with those adversarial thoughts. Organizations, religious groups, churches that would say, our church says you're not a child of God. Our group says you're not welcome here because you're not truly who you are proclaim to be or profess to be. And so they use others to attack us, or they're constantly telling us, you're not good enough to be a child of God. You see, all those things are these energies of a world around us that want to create this adversarial attack upon us, our lives, and strip us of our power and our authority as a child of God. And when we begin to question and doubt our true nature as to who we are and created in this image and likeness of the divine, we begin to question and wonder what happens is we become like sheep that wander without a shepherd. Well, maybe I'm not that. And maybe I'm not heir to all good things. And maybe I don't really deserve the goodness of God. And maybe I'm not worthy of this. And maybe I'm just not really the child of God. And that's not my true nature. You see, what happens within our lives is that we forget. And so we have to stop listening to what others and the world around us tell us and know within our hearts and our lives and stop and get acquainted with who we are. We have to understand that we are this very extension of God, this very revelation of God. We are that which the world sees around us, the very expression of the divine at all times. You are the seed of God, we might say, and that seed holds within it all the attributes of every part of that plant or that mother plant. That seed has within it, when you look at a tomato seed, all the elements of a tomato are there within that seed. And that's who you are, that seed of God. And all the divinity is within you, all the goodness is within you, all the love is within you, all the grace is within you, all the forgiveness is within you. This is your true nature, and this is your true identity of who you are. Just as seeds are perfect, perfect as the source from which they came. And that's who you are. I think we need to say this and proclaim this. I'm perfect. Let's say it together. I'm perfect. What's perfect about you is that you were created in this wonderful perfection. That's your true nature. Now, this means, means that sometimes we've slipped away from our true nature, and we've involved in things that maybe aren't always hitting the mark as perfection. But our true nature within us, created as beings, we are perfect. For we, like the seed, are perfect in the way that it contains all the elements of the mother plant. And so all those attributes of God are within you. And when we realize that's my natural state, that's my true nature, we can rise up and live to it. Suddenly, like my third grade teacher, we discover this moment that says, why don't you be what you're meant to be? Why don't you be, just live out your true essence? Rather than the world saying you need to be X, you need to be Y, you need to be this, live out your true nature. And that is you're the seed of God. You're the revelation. You're the divine expression of all that is. And what a beautiful thing this is because seeds contain a desire to grow. Wow. Isn't that something? You put a seed in there and you don't find it in the ground. And isn't it wonderful? We don't have to coax coerce, beg, plead, come on, seed, come on, come on, grow, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, do you ever see a gardener going out there and trying to beg and plead and dance around and hoping that his seeds will somehow be coerced to grow? No, it's innate within them, a desire to grow, to expand, to flourish, to be, to create, to manifest. And we find this wonderful things that uh, then within us is that who you are and your purpose as the seed of God has within you an innate desire to grow and to flourish and to be more than what you are right now. It's within you. It is your innate desire. It is your true nature to be expanding 
to be flourishing and growing and maturing, to becoming something more, greater things than this shall he do, Jesus said. Greater things than this moment, greater things than this. There is something greater to expand, to be enlarged, to be created, to be flourishing, to be growing in and through and all around you. How beautiful that is. So actually, child of God, I want to tell you this. What's natural for you is expansion. Expansion. The very power of divine expansion within you. It is your nature. For all of God is an expanding energy of life. All of God is all ever creating and manifesting and expanding. And we find that the universe that we live in is constantly expanding. Scientists think, well, we've come to the edge. Oh, no, there's more. We've come to the edge. Oh, no, there's more. Oh, we thought we were at the edge of the universe, and there's more and more and more and more, and the universe is ever expanding and stretching outward. All of the divine, all of God is saying, there's more. There's more. And isn't it wonderful? We may think at times in our spiritual life, wait a minute, I, there is no more. And in God, you can never say that. There's always more. For the God is this God of expansion and expression of greater things, greater things unfolding within our lives. So we find this beautiful text that you read today from the book of Isaiah saying to us, enlarge your place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out and expand to the right and to the left. Wow, it's a beautiful metaphor describing as people of the Middle Eastern culture began to set up tent or establish their home or their base, they would set their tent up and say, well, this is as large as my tent is, or this is my land, or this is my property. And Isaiah is saying, no, stretch it out. Put those stakes a little bit farther on either side. Expand those tent curtains. Reach out and know that the place where you dwell is meant to be in the spirit of expansion, growth, and creation of great things. Go big or go home, you might say. It's that very expression to say, hey, go out there and if you live in this life of the energy of ever creating new and expansive things within your own personal life. For God wants to see you moving forward. That's right, progressing expanding, growing. God has plans constantly to bless you. And when we see scripture after scripture after scripture explaining the blessings, the goodness, the generosity of God desiring to unfold in your life, and yet we sit back with this ho-hum feeling and the sense, well, I'm not that creative, and I can't do this, and I'm limited, and I can't expand. I don't know how I can go forward when I'm just finding all my limitations. You see, God is telling this constantly in Scripture. I am doing a new thing. The thing you did yesterday, it's passe. Here's a new thing. We're expanding into the new thing. That which you dreamt about, that which you thought about, that which you engaged in yesterday is now old. And there's a newer thing, an even greater thing, an expansion of your life. What the Spirit of God wants to unfold within you. God's desire is for you to go further than you can imagine. Now, we often in our life want to set kind of limitations and say, well, there's limitations to my age, to my physical capability. There's limitations to this and that. And, you know, when we resign to those things, they hold us in captive. Yet the Spirit of God is one of setting you free, liberating you to know and to believe that all things are possible within you. It is this wonderful sense to say, I can do, I can expand greater things yet. I may have thought my life was rich and full, but it can be even richer and fuller yet. There is more that God wants to do in and through me, around me, and for me. So as we are invited to expand our, expand our tent, let our curtains go even further out. Let the stakes go even further to stretch out. That's the calling of our spiritual life. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, give me some room, I'm about to stretch. Give me some room, I'm about to stretch. That's right. Give me some room, I'm about to stretch. That's the calling of your true nature. Watch out, world, here I am. I'm stretching, I'm expanding, I'm going higher, I'm stretching out further. 
My stakes may have been here, but I've moved them out here. My tent curtain was here, but it's going wide. I am expanding the belief of what is possible in my life. Get ready. I'm about to stretch. That's the calling of our spiritual life. When we understand this, we see that the creative source always seeks to expand and wants to expand in and through you. It wants to be expressed in greater ways. God says, I want to do amazing things. Would you express me in a greater way? Would you believe for something more powerful in a greater way? Because I'm ready. And sometimes we're not. We just haven't gotten to a place where we're ready to embrace the possibilities of something greater in our lives. There's a prayer for the future that was quoted by Sir Francis Drake. It says this, disturb us, Lord. When we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we arrive safely because we've sailed just too close to the shore, disturb us, Lord, with all the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we've allowed our vision of new heaven to grow dim. You see how important it is that maybe we just need a little shaking up. Because God wants to do something bigger, greater in you, through you, around you, and for you. Get ready to stretch. Move on out because I need some room here. God's expanding and growing within me, unfolding within me. Greater things are yet to come. But we may at times need to be disturbed a little in our settledness. That we're just kind of complacent with the so-so and what is. And yet the Spirit's desire is saying, I want to do greater things. I want to do greater things. Something greater inside. I want to express it more. I want to unfold for you even greater blessings. Uh, you may think, well, wait a minute. You know, God is good here. And we, we're really blessed, and we're appreciative of that. We should just be thankful for what we have. Nothing wrong with being thankful for what we have, and at the same time, allowing more to unfold for our lives, to allow even more to be accomplished within our lives. And so I want you to know that when you ask for something, when you begin to claim something in your prayer life, in your faith life, in your believing, it's already assembled for you immediately. You're like, what? What? You mean when I pray, it's already there for me? I thought, you know, like I got to pray and then I wait six months. I got to pray maybe a year. I got to pray and then, you know, maybe it will happen later on in my life. But here's what happens in our life when we pray. We understand that God knows what you ask before you ask. God knows what you have need of before you even thought to express it. So God already knowing has already prepared and has already made the way possible for you. He's already said, I'm ready to expand. What are you believing for? Greater financial prosperity? You've been claiming that? Oh, well, I've already prepared it for you. I've been eager and ready to expand. You wanted health and new wholeness? I've already prepared that for you. I got it ready. I've been just waiting for you to wake up to this realization that it's there and available for you. You see, when we understand this, we understand that life comes to match our vibrational frequency. Hmm. Let's explain that a little bit. You know, every thought is energy, right? It's expressing an energy. There's an energy behind every thought that you uh, may think because all thoughts are creative. And there is a vibrational frequency that's attached to it. And when we practice meditation, we get centered when we are in prayer. We shift this energy. We're letting go of negative thoughts. And that energy changes for us. The vibrational frequency changes. We move to a frequency of love, a higher vibrational frequency within our hearts and our lives. We move into a different realm, and we hold that vibration as a result of the force of, or of our energy. And when we hold that vibration, when we're consistent, when we're holding on to that frequency and that level, that's what we're saying in faith and prayer. You see, that's a little science of our spirituality. And a little spirituality of the science that we live in, in our world. Thought is energy, and it vibrates at a frequency. 
it's going out there. And those thoughts expressed are vocalized, and there is a vibration going on right now that you're hearing called my voice. And that is moving across this room right now, and you are receiving this vibrational frequency right now. And it is hopefully raising you in consciousness to a new level of what's possible within your life. So when you ask, it is given vibrationally immediately. And because God knows already. So that frequency, that vibration that is going out, that energy that's going out, is already in creative mode. And it's already been waiting there in creative mode. Isn't that wonderful? Because then we have this wonderful assurance that as we ask, the Bible says, we receive. Sometimes we've got it in our mind. Yes, I know I receive a year later. I know I receive maybe 10 years later. I've received this and that. And we always say, well, then we get it in the right perfect time. I want you to know that it unfolds for us right now in this moment. And that's the beauty that as we hold the vibration, as we hold those thoughts and we hold that belief, it's like holding and saying, uh, I don't live in the not enoughness. I live in the there is enoughness. That's a different vibration, okay? A different thing that we're holding that vibration. I live in enoughness. I live in abundance. I live in the upholding of all good. I dwell there. It's already made for me, already created for me. I don't have to beg, plead, massage God, coerce God. The seed is planted, and the seed already has a desire to grow and to flourish. The seed of your prayer, the seed of your faith is planted, and it has a desire to unfold and to flourish within your life. So we hold this vibrational thought, this energy, this frequency that says, I live right now in enoughness. And enoughness, if I can use that word, is there for me. It is like believing that the seed that has been planted, and I don't doubt the seed because I know how the seed works. Now, we may dance around the seed, shall we say, of our faith and our expression with all these negative emotions that compromise your desire. You know, you can't hold a desire and then doubt it. You know, I'm healthy, not so. I am rich, not quite. I am blessed, oh, sometimes. You know, we have this dance that we do constantly. You can't hold on to a desire and release it in doubt. You're holding on and you're letting it go. This is craziness that we think that this is our spiritual life and how we may live it. Because when you have a negative motion, you are actually compromising your desire. You're holding it back. It's kind of like you put a stick in that bike wheel and it slows the wheel down. You know, it doesn't get to turn smoothly and easily. What happens is we actually buck our own current. That's right. The natural state of God's unfolding goodness is a current flowing through our world. It's a current. God already says, I want to bless you. I want to prosper you. Uh, we're the ones who buck against it. Go, well, I don't see that prosperity. I don't see that blessing. I don't know if it's really true. Uh, sometimes, yes, maybe, but not always. I don't necessarily live. You see, we're bucking against the very current. We're pushing against it. And it's we who are the obstacle to the very goodness that's already created, already there for you, and is waiting with the invitation. Are you ready to stretch? Are you ready to move out your tent stakes? Are you ready to expand your curtains? Are you ready to move on out and make this dwelling place larger than ever before? Because I'm just waiting for you. We buck this current when all the time, when we are constantly speaking from what is. And what is, is old news. You know, like I say, you know, it's like chewing gum that's all the flavor has gone out. That's like the what is. What is, is what is, is here. It's done. And God says, well, I got something new. What You've already chewed all the flavor out of the gum, shall we say. And it, it, what is, is just some rubber gum in your mouth that's flavorless. I got something new for you. Okay? So we're living then in this realm of what is coming is where you want to be rather than what is. Okay? Because if you're saying, well, this is it. This is my today. But wait a minute. There's something more. Ah, you know what that's called? Living in expectancy. Wow, wouldn't that be a great theme for our lives? 
Oh, I'm so glad we've already chosen it. That's our theme for 2020. I'm so glad we've already said we are people who are living in expectancy. We're not the people who are living in what is. We're living in what's coming, what is unfolding. We're living in the realm of this expectancy every single day that says, I'm expanding my vision. I'm expanding my faith. I'm expanding my belief. I'm expanding the very trust that I have that all things are working together for me, for my good. And here's the beautiful thing is, we then, in this power of expansion, make our thoughts a really a reality. Because we begin to see it before we believe it. Begin to accept it as a reality before it actually comes and unfolds for us. Where do we get that? The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. That's why we're people of faith. For people of faith, it says, I believe it's already expanding and unfolding for me before I even know it's here, before I even experience it. I know it's already created for me. It's already there for me. It's already ready for me. It's prepared for me. And so what I do is just begin to visualize that I'm already in the all good. I'm already experiencing my healing before my healing has even begun. I'm already experiencing my prosperity before my prosperity unfolds. I'm already in the great spirit of gratitude. The faith that I have says, I know it is here. It is now. It is unfolding. It is the coming, not what was, not my yesterday, but is my today and my now in this moment. So we experience everything first in feeling and in mind. Those two things, really important. Now we've been studying this in our classes. I want to make sure everybody embraces this that we understand that we feel the blessing that we know is the blessing because we work then in the realm of spiritual law. Spiritual law says that which you sow, you reap, right? That's a law. That's a spiritual law. I sow love, I reap love. I sow peace, I reap peace. You know what? When we sow hatred, we get hatred, especially on Facebook, don't we? (laughs) <laughs> when we sow antagonistic atmospheres, when we condemn, when we tear people down, what do we get back? We get somebody firing back the office, opposing to you and attacking us and tearing us down. And we wonder, why is this world in such chaos? Well, because I've been sowing chaos. You know, I've been speaking chaos. I've been creating drama and I get drama back because the spiritual law says, whatever you sow, you reap. Okay. Wow, wouldn't it be great if we then said, let me work this law for my good, not for that which I don't desire. So what am I going to do? I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to work this law. I'm going to sow all kinds of love. I'm going to sow compassion. I'm going to sow grace to people. I'm going to post things on Facebook. I'm going to post things on in social media. I'm going to talk because I emphasize it a lot because a lot of our world is influenced by social media today. A lot of us enjoy some time on Facebook. A lot of us enjoy all this. I want to share with you how important it is that you are sowing that which you desire to unfold within your life, and you then work the law for you, not against you. How important that is. Spiritual law then begins to unfold in this powerful way as you then begin to say, this is what I feel. This is what I know. I know the law will unfold exactly what I've sown, and so I feel already ahead of time exactly what I've sown. I'm feeling love. And as I share this or speak this or post this or as I talk with others, I just feel love in my words. I feel love in my uh, expressions, my gestures, in all ways. And you know what I get back? Exactly what I've sown. Here's the thing. A lot of times we get caught up in that we're waiting for the thing to happen before we're grateful for it. We're waiting for the thing to happen before we rejoice in it. We're waiting for it to be uh, happen before we can actually express any kind of joy. Why we miss out on a whole lot? We do, because we're waiting around before we express the joy. But you know what all Scripture says? It invites us to express the joy in advance of the receiving, the gratitude in advance of receiving. For this is the spirit of expansion that says, "I'm putting out my." Uh, 
my stakes even further. I'm expanding my tent. I'm expanding this with great joy, knowing that as I do so, I'm making room for more. Wow. The joy, the gratitude we express in advance enables then that which we hold in mind and in thought, in prayer, in faith, to become a reality within us. And you know what? We get to experience the joy right now. Like, I'm healed right now. I'm going to feel the joy of that. I'm blessed right now. I want to feel the joy of being blessed right now. Oh, I'm prospering. Oh, I want to feel the joy. I'm successful right now. And I want to feel the joy of that and the gratitude of that. And when I do, I usher in this wonderful opportunity of that which has already been created for me to happen as my reality. I want you to find and fully experience the joy of turning your thoughts into things. For this feeling, the realness of something unseen is so important for our lives. Feeling it as if it is already here, it is already there. And when we do it, that's the power of faith at work. The woman who had an issue of blood in Scripture, she sought out Jesus and thought, you know what, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, that all I got to do is just, if I could just touch his, his robe, how wonderful, I know I'll be healed. She's already expressing the joy and the feeling well in advance before it even happened. That's the unfolding of the goodness. And suddenly as she does so and touches, Jesus, whoa, somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. I, I felt the power go through me. I felt this because her faith, her joy, her belief, her trust, her feeling that it would happen, it happened. The Roman centurion came to Jesus and said, Jesus, you don't even need to come to my house. You don't even need to visit me. But you just speak the word, and I know that my beloved boy will be healed. I know this. I feel it. I'm in gratitude for it already. I'm already enjoying this experience because I know you just say it. You don't need to come to my house 10 miles away or wherever it was. You don't need to visit. You, I don't need to wait for you to arrive. You say the word, and the healing is now unfolding. That's the expectancy. That's the joy. That's the feeling, and so it is. So today, I want you to know what is natural for you is expansion. You're a child of God, ever expanding, ever growing, ever seeking and engaging this wonderful unfolding of more goodness than you had before. And what you have yesterday is what is, but there is yet more. And so we want to move from the what is to the what's coming, the what's unfolding even more in our understanding as the ancient text is inviting those who saw their life as barren and you read this chapter of Isaiah 54 and all those who may have thought that they were in discouragement and yet this passage this whole text is one of unfolding here's what's exciting for you you may have thought you were barren you may not have thought you had anything you may not have thought you were anyone at all but I invite you to expand your tents because there is blessings unfolding for you this is why it's important to understand you are a natural. That's right. It's innate within you. The power of God wants to unfold goodness, it wants to expand within you. So I want you to say it with me again. Give me some room. I'm about to stretch. Give me some room. I'm about to stretch. Amen.